Hi YouTube, welcome to the MA Academy C++ pointers tutorial series. In this tutorial, I will show you guys the address of operator. I will also explain things like whenever we are declaring and initializing a variable, how is it stored in the memory? How do we retrieve the values of it? And how do we get the address of those variables? So let's get started. Now there is one quick thing that I wanted to mention is that I have created this website in here. It's very new. It's called www.maacademytutorials.com uh, I have uploaded only a couple of tutorials or so for now being it's just uh, there are only a couple of articles in it but uh, with the passage of time I will upload more and more tutorials to it so feel free to visit it so let's get back to this tutorial in here so for this tutorial I am uh, work I will be working with this simple program that I have created in here so it's very simple now the first thing that I am doing in this program is that I am declaring a variable and I'm initializing it with this value. So this variable is of type car, it is called C and I am assigning it the value of M. Next I create another variable, I call it num and I'm initializing it with the value of 2123 and this variable is of type int or integer. Then I declare and initialize another variable. It's of type float or floating point. It's called this for decimal. And I'm assigning it the value of 4.5. So whenever we are declaring and initializing these values, how does it get stored in the memory? So for this, I have created a couple of diagrams in here. So this is our memory. Our memory consists of individual cells and each of this, these cells has a unique address. So we can see that this cell as a unique address the next cell again has another unique address and this cell has unique address as well so all of these cells that we see in here all of them has a unique address each and every single one of them that's how the operating system knows how to refer to which part of it and from here to retrieve the instructions and from here to retrieve the data because each one of these cells has a unique address so first we said that let's declare and initialize a variable we said that it's of type car. It is called C and it is uh, has, has the value of M. So we can see that whenever we declare and initialize it, M gets stored inside the memory. So in here, we can see that M gets stored inside the memory. Then we declare and initialize another variable. It is of type integer. And this has a value of 2123 or 2123. So this gets stored in this part of the memory. Then we create another variable. It's of type floating point. It's called this and it has the value of 4.5 and it gets stored in here. So I am, uh, I've said that some of these uh, M gets stored in here, 2122 gets stored in here, 4.5 in here. It can get stored anywhere inside your memory. So I have as I put it in different places because whenever you are declaring and initializing variables in your program, it does not mean that they all get stored inside consecutive memory location so these variables and these values might be scattered in your memory so they don't have to be in consecutive memory locations whenever your compiler sees uh, the free memory it will put it in there and these values so they don't have to be in consecutive memory locations so how many bytes does it take so as we know that a car data type in here so we said that car c is equal to m so this character or this data type of car, it takes one byte. So when we say take M and assign it to the variable called C, so this M gets stored in here, right? So this M takes one byte. So these cells that you see in here inside the memory, each one of them is of size one byte. And each of these bytes has a unique address. So this byte, it is of type, it is of size one byte. It has a unique address this byte again this cell in here it is of size one byte it has a unique address this one again uh, it is of size one byte and it has a unique address so this character in here that we create it takes one byte so this m takes one byte in your memory so this gets stored inside this cell in here but next we create another variable you're saying it is of type integer so on most platforms, on most operating systems, an integer takes four bytes. 
So this value that we store in here, this 2,123, it is stored in four cell locations because we said each of these cells in here, it is of size one byte. So this is one byte, this is another byte. So this 2,123 that we store, it gets assigned to, or it uses four bytes in the memory. However, for simplicity's sake, I have put it inside in here, inside this one location. However, in reality or in actually in a computer memory, it will take four bytes. So if this one cell, this is one byte, this is two byte, then this is on the next column in here, sorry, on the next row, two bytes from here. So it will take four bytes. So these four bytes in here, one, two, and then on the next row, this three and four, these three, four bytes, these four bytes will be assigned or will be used by this integer in here. Or this variable called num. Next we declare this variable we are saying it's of type float and it has value of 4.5 so float like integer on most platforms it takes four bytes so this four bytes again 4.5 it gets stored inside the memory for simplicity's sake I am showing that it takes one cell block however one cell location however in reality it will take four cells so we said that uh, float takes four bytes. So one cell is one side one um, One cell is one byte. So this is two bytes three bytes and four bytes So this 4.5 will be stored inside these four bytes in here. So this float this uh, Integer sorry this variable in here. This will take four bytes. So this one two three and four So these four bytes these will be assigned to this variable called this so however, as I said, for simplicity's sake, I'm using one cell location. A byte takes one, sorry, a character takes one byte. So this takes one, say one memory location, one cell. An integer, it takes four bytes. So in here, two bytes from here, two bytes from here. And again, a floating point also takes four bytes. So this four bytes will be taken, these four cell locations will be taken by this uh, variable uh, called this. Now let's see the next diagram in here. So in here, I'm only concentrating on those particular cells which holds the values in which we are interested. So first we said that the character C, it gets assigned, the, this, sorry, this variable C gets assigned the character M. So this car, as we said, car data types takes one byte. So this gets a sort inside this memory location. It is of size one byte and it has the address of 246. However, in reality, the address will be very complicated. It will look something like this. In the next few minutes, I will also show it how do we get this address from your program. But it will look something like this, very complicated. However, for simplicity's sake, I'm using these simple and short numbers. So this 246, it has this character M. So if I bring up this diagram, so this we can see that this variable that holds the character M, it has the address of 246. So this is what it means. Next, we create another variable. It's, we said it's called num. It holds the value of 2,123, and it has the address of 322. The same goes for this one. It is called this. It holds the value of 4.5. It also has a unique address. It's 100. However, you might have a question that since all these memory locations has a unique address and we said that the integer and floating point numbers they take four bytes right so which address will we use so in here as i said that the integer will take four bytes so one two from here and then two from here the same goes for floating point it will take four bytes so i said that all these cells in here this one will have a unique address this will have a unique address this will have a unique address each and every cell will have a unique address so when this floating point uses four bytes so it has a unique address this cell this has a unique address this has a unique address and this has a unique address however all of them are being used by one variable so which address will this variable point to or which variable will so which address will this variable use so how will the program or the operating system or the compiler get this value which address will it use the address of this cell, this cell, this cell, or this one. So it will use the address of the first cell in here. So the same goes with the integer. So it will take four cells in here since it's four bytes. So one, two, three, four. However, when we are referring to this variable num, 
it means that it will only take the value of the first cell in here it won't refer to it with four decimal for with four addresses even though it takes four memory locations we refer to it with the address of only the first cell in this memory block so this memory block takes four bytes again this one also takes four bytes however we refer to this block with the address of the first cell in this block which is 4.5 the address of one so these addresses that you can see these are the addresses of the first cells in these blocks it's just an extra thing that i wanted to mention in case you were curious about it so just know that whenever you are using this variable num it points to this address this is the address that contains this number so why do we use these variable names we use these variable names because if we had to use these addresses so imagine the addresses as i said will look something like this so every time you had to assign a value you had to retrieve it so in here i'm just saying print c print num print this so every time if you had to use numbers like this print this or change the location change the contents of this memory location it would have been very tedious boring and error prone you would face lots of errors because it's not easy to work with these numbers in here so that's why we use variable names so instead of saying change this memory location or show me the contents of this memory location we just use the memory address sorry the variable name so it makes things very simple so in our program how do we get these values how do we get the addresses of these values that we store in so this 4.5 inside inside the memory this m resides inside the memory and this 2123 resides inside the memory how do we get the addresses of it so it's very simple all we have to do is we have to use the address of operator what does it mean so let's quickly copy this part in here so in here i'm saying um as you are pointing this out printing it out i'm using the ampersand so this ampersand, this is called the address of operator. We use the address of operator to view the address of it. Currently, we, when we didn't use this, it showed that the values that these variables hold. But if you want to know the addresses of it, we have to use this ampersand operator or the address of operator. So let's quickly run this. So in here, when I run it, you can see that we get these values in here. For the C, we get M and for these two you can see that i am getting the addresses of it so we can see that in here the num in here it has an address of this it looks you can see that very complicated it's not like it has uh in here if i open this so you can see that this c in here it has the address i said 246 but it said that in real life in computers this will look something like this so in here this 246 so it's very, it was for simplicity sake that I did it in here. So in real life, the addresses will look something like this. So it means that this number that we are using, it resides inside the memory. But this memory has this address in here. The memory at this address, you will find this number of 2123. And for this address of uh, 0x, this in here, at this address, you will find the number of 4.5. However, when we are using it with the C, we only get the value of it. So just know that whenever you are using the ampersand operator, you get the value of the uh, memory location. Uh, for this one, it's just showing me that, I'm not sure why. But uh, whenever you are interested in that, in the getting the address of it, we use the ampersand operator. The ampersand operator shows us the address of the shows us the address of the uh, the address of the memory in which this number or this variable resides so this is it for this one guys if you have any questions any suggestions or recommendations feel free to put it in the comment section below and uh, if you uh, found this tutorial useful make sure to share it with your friends and i'll see you guys in the next one